Thank you for tuning in to another edition of the Vulcan Report. This end of day report is for trading on what is it, Tuesday? <laughs> Forget what day of the week it is. Tuesday, January the thirty first, two thousand seventeen. The time right now of this report is thirteen minutes after eight p.m. Eastern Standard Time, and we're looking at the daily chart of the gold futures. Uh, gold had a really nice run today. Uh, made it up almost back to the 20, uh, 12, 20 level. Couldn't quite get there before closing out uh, around the 12, 12 level. Currently, uh, the market has now reopened and we're trading at 12, 12 even. So the question, though, is as we're in the Kumo cloud of death, are we going to see more volatility, more up and down days, up today, down tomorrow, up today, down tomorrow? before it finally breaks. We're going to still need to see that strong run up out of the Kumo cloud before we can really get happy here, but we'll take what we can get. The problem that I see though was with this. Let me show you what I'm talking about. Gold being up almost 20 bucks, but then JNUG still couldn't close above $9. This is all you got today on the JNUG. That's nothing. So we're barely moving. Take a look at GDXJ. Nice pop in the GDXJ, but the JNUG can't move. So the GDXJ is moving more than the JNUG. This is this is crazy, and it's outside of the Kumo cloud. JNUG can't even get out of the cloud. Looking right here now at the GDXJ, GDXJ looks incredible like it's about to go to 40 and close there this week. So it's very suspicious when you have gold moving strongly, but then the miner, the miners can't follow suit. That's kind of suspect to me. And that could, uh, sh you know, that kind of blood in the water, per se, could bring the sharks out, especially when China comes back off a of vacation. I'm just saying. There were a lot of talking heads that were saying that when China goes away on, um, you know, Chinese New Year, that gold's going to get smashed and all this other stuff, and they were absolutely positively wrong. Gold is catching a bit. There's a lot of people that have been short the stock market, and they keep getting crushed. And yet, they're shorting now and saying, "Oh, this apocalypse." Some people are hedging their bets and saying, "Well, in in the third quarter, the market's going to pull back." Man, you don't know what it's going to do tomorrow how you know what's going to happen in the third quarter you know absolutely nothing you know nothing you're prognosticating and you know nothing so let me show you a little bit of how much people know nothing we're going to look at the uvxy here's your uvxy daily chart hardly any movement whatsoever Closed, let's just go back to this 2368. Went from 2368 to 2723, and then today we closed at 2492. So technically speaking, 2492 is what we are in three trading sessions, right? You've only moved a dollar just based off the closes. Let me show you something. This disconnect with the markets. Three trading sessions, right? All right, the Dow goes from 19,887 on a close to where we are now at 19,820. 887 to 820. There's nothing, there is no collapse here. There's no true sell-off in the market per se. Okay, if you want to measure from here, the, the last uh, contract high, 20,073. We got down to 19,713. So you got a three, about, a, about approximately a 300 point run. That's it. The Dow on average used to have three to 400 point ranges per day. 
That was the daily range. The average daily range in the Dow was 3,400 points. That's, that's nothing. You've seen nothing here. Nothing. That's why the UVXY can barely move. Because there's really nothing happening here. Nothing happening here. Again, nothing happening here. One more time. There is nothing happening here. So everyone's calling for this market crash. <laughs> you keep getting sorely disappointed. I mean, you can try to get, you can try to bang it out on an intraday basis and scalp a little here and there and day trade here and a little there. But let's be honest, you're not piling on put positions. You're not putting on big puts. If you are, you've lost all your money. Your puts have expired worthless. Every time they expire, worthless. Worthless, worthless, worthless. Trade what you see, not what you think. Trade what you see, not what you think. Perfect case in point of trading what you see and not what you think. Let's look at NAC. All right. Knick-knack. Breakout, fill the gap. Breakout, fill the gap. Tried to break out with a spike, reversed, and then now we're heading lower. But there's nothing bearish on the chart. Do you see anything bearish on this chart? I'm waiting. All you see is an elongated consolidation, and we're not even in the Kumo cloud. You know what's about to happen here. We're going to four dollars. You already know that. You know we're going to four dollars. I rest my case. The winner today was dry ships. Dry ships acted like a fool today. A stone cold fool. Look at this floor of 196. Today we went up to five dollars and seventy two cents. Five dollars and seventy two cents, folks. Five dollars and seventy two cents. Pulse waves rock. That's all I gotta say. Trade what you see and not what you think. Pulse waves rock. Moving ahead, people talking about silver. High hold silver. Silver on the daily chart is outside of the Kumo cloud. Lovely. You know it's going to 18. You know it. It's going to 18. Do you see anything bearish on the chart? It's going to 18. One more time. Silver is going to 18. Did you get that? Silver is going to 18. Weekly chart. Strong. Silver is going to get deeper in this Kumo cloud of death. Then we'll start seeing the whipping sawing and a consolidation before we go to 20. Silver's going to 20. Silver is going to 20. Let's look at one more. People talking about crude oil. People talking about the Dakota Pipeline. All that good stuff. Where is crude oil going? Anybody? Crude oil is going to 55. Crude oil is going to 55. Say what you want, it's going to 55. From 55, it will blast off like a rocket to 60. That's where they want to take it, that's where it's going. Doesn't matter what you think, doesn't matter about your Alaska pipeline or your Dakota pipeline or any other pipeline. Oil is going to 55. It's just how it is. The prices do what the prices do. Trade what you see, not what you think. The dollar's in trouble. The dollar is going to 98. The dollar is going to 98. 
the dollar is going to 98. Bitcoin is at 975. It wants to go back to 1,000. Bitcoin is going to 1,000. Bitcoin is going to 1,000. At this point, there should be no question that Bitcoin has decoupled from the U.S. dollar index. Therefore, we need to ask ourselves a question. What's going to happen with commodity prices? As this dollar gets cheaper, commodity prices get stronger. Can we get a lift from this declining price? Is the Fed finally going to lose the battle at 98? She's struggling to stay above par. Right now, she's trading below par. The dollar traditionally has had a problem with par. Got up to 103.81 half. But now we're having a problem with par. That's a three cent drop. That's huge. That's phenomenal. Where will we go from here? Come on over to PulseWaveTrading.com. Learn how to trade and navigate these rough market waters. Learn how to profit for you and your family so you can take care of you and your loved ones in these uncertain times. Learn how to hedge your physicals portfolio. Learn how to pimp the central banks who have been pimping you all of your natural life. Bulls make money, bears make money, but pigs get slaughtered. So remember to take what you can and give nothing back. Peace.